So he stealthily approached the man and gave him a powerful push in the back. Hello everyone, I'm Tim. Did you know that karate is what it is today because one of its greatest forefathers was a bit of a prankster? Just like last week, today we'll talk about one of the more legendary people in karate's history, namely Tode Sakugawa. Now if Funakoshi can be considered as the father of modern karate, and Itosu is the grandfather, I believe Sakugawa can rightly be called the great great grandfather of modern karate, if such a concept even makes sense. Now the main source for this story is also Richard Kim's book The Weaponless Warriors. Sakugawa was born in 1733 and died in 1815 and in this 82 year period he became one of the most influential karate masters of his time. Richard Kim said it thusly, karate as it is today is indebted to a man known as Karate Sakugawa for a great many things. Among them are the Kushanku Kata, the Sakugawa Bo Kata, and the Dojo Kun or Gym Precept. Already I have to clarify that Karate was mostly used as a term when Tode was meant. We're also going to speak of a person called Kushanku. Now this wasn't his name however, it was more like a title. Now lastly, Richard Kim mentions the Sakugawa Bo Kata. We're talking of Sakugawa no Kon because Kon is the Okinawan word for Bo. Now, with these clarifications out of the way, let's travel back to Okinawa in the year 1750. Sakugawa's father came home critically ill after being violated by a group of ruffians who forced him to drink beyond human capacity. As he lay there dying, he told the young Sakugawa the following, Son, take a good look at me. I want you to promise me one thing. Take up the martial arts and don't be like your father. Don't ever let yourself be a subject of ridicule and abuse from bullies and men of that ilk. When he had laid his father to rest, Sakogawa went out to find a martial arts teacher to honor his father's dying wish. He found what he was looking for in the monk Takahara. Now Takahara took the young man as his student and over the years, Sakugawa developed prodigiously and became the old master's best student. Six years passed and one day Sakugawa was out on the town, probably drinking, because he was feeling mischievous. He saw a Chinese man standing by the edge of the river and Sakugawa wanted to push the foreigner in the water as a prank. So he stealthily approached the man and gave him a powerful push in the back. The stranger, however, just shouted, Danger! 
turned and forcibly grabbed Sakugawa's hand. He asked, now why would you do that? Don't you realize how dangerous your actions might have been? What if I was some weakling? What if I couldn't swim? The Okinawan people have been good to me, so I let this slide, but never do such a thing again. Sakugawa was so ashamed, he didn't know what to say, when at that time, a villager approached the Chinese man with a jug of what was probably awamori. The villager recognized Sakugawa and said, Mr. Sakugawa, what are you doing here? The Chinese man replied, you know this man? Yes, the villager said, he is Sakugawa, a well-known local karate student, he's really good. The Chinese man thought it over while looking at his would-be assailant and said, if you ever come to Kumemura, ask for Kushanku and I will teach you not only the how, but also the why of the martial arts. When he got home, he was very excited and told his master Takahara what had happened. The master was overjoyed and told him, go to Kushanku and learn what you can. He is the most skillful of all the martial artists who have ever come from China. Fortune is smiling on you. When Kushanku returns to China, you are welcome to come back to his house. Now, hurry! Years passed and Sakugawa trained with this Chinese master when he received a message to return to his sensei Takahara. The old man was ill and said, I called you back because I want you to carry on karate the correct way. After my death, I want you to name yourself Karate Sakugawa and make the Okinawan people proud of you. After his master passed away and his Chinese master returned to China, Sakugawa took the name Karate Sakugawa and carried on from where Takahara left off. Whether these events truly transpired the way they are described here, I can't say. As we're translating oral history from different cultures through many different filters. It's always difficult to truly know what happened in history. But the least we can say is that there are some good stories to be told. And that's also worth something. Next week, we'll dive back into the dojo and see what we can apply from Pinan Sandan. So what do you think? Was Sakugawa the historical figure pictured here? Do you know of different ways these things happened? Would you like to hear more of him or his students? Leave a comment below and let me know. Of course, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can really help the channel improve by doing this. For now, let me wish you a wonderful day. And as always, thanks for watching.